going to talk about dare to be bold, fearless, and selfless. Bold leaders challenge standard approaches. They get others to go beyond what they thought was possible. Bold leaders energize others. They bring passion into the room. Bold leaders also recognize when changes must be made, and they have the courage to make those changes. I'm speaking today from the perspective of a global leader. So I spend 50% of my time working in the Middle East, Asia Pacific, and Latin America. I just happen to live here, and I'll tell you why. In the global context, global or, or bold leadership changes, right? Once you leave the US, bold leadership is defined differently. So I'm glad, you know, Michelle and, and my, my fellow panelists already covered bold here, okay? For me, bold leadership is not only influencing others, but actually influencing others' attitudes. It's about influencing others' behaviors. Bold leadership is about utilizing competencies from a global mindset and a global perspective. It's about exhibiting intercultural competency, behavioral adaptability, cultural intelligence, in addition to the emotional intelligence that you exhibit here. And even more importantly, it requires social intelligence. And you need to flex your style depending on where you are. I was given the opportunity to exercise that bold leadership. And I'm gonna use one of my, my props from my company. Does anyone know what this is? A big pin. A big pin. <laughs> but more than a big pin, this is symbolic to me because it stands for writing my own story, creating my own version of how my life should be. What do I mean by that? When I worked at Diageo, I was comfortable. I was there for seven years. I you know, did the same work every day. I trained new lawyers. I was, I was doing my thing. But as I was comfortable, I watched others being promoted over me. But I knew I was the smartest person in the room, the hardest worker in the room, and clearly I had the best pedigree in the room. But yet, there was no movement for me. And I just couldn't figure out why. So one day I was sitting at a panel and the panel was about being a global leader. And Diageo had invited presidents from all over the world, you know, Africa, Asia, Latin America, and they came and they spoke on a panel about all the great work they're doing in emerging markets. And it was great. And I, re I remember coming out of there feeling motivated and energized and said, I want to be like them one day. And I remember hearing my colleagues say, who wants to go? work in Africa. Like, you know, who would, want, who would want to live in Latin America? We have the life here. We are happy in the US. We have our houses. We have our children. We can do whatever we want to do. We can get paid the most. And I said, oh my gosh, that's where I differ from my colleagues. That's it. I'm the only person on my team that's fully mobile. I'm the only person on my team that's not afraid of change. Oh, and I'm the only person on my team that was inspired <laughs> by these global leaders. And it was at that point that I decided to rewrite my story. So I went up to those leaders after the conference and said, I'm going to come work for you one day. And I will never forget it. The president of uh, 
Nigeria looked at the president of South Africa and they, you know, they laughed, right? Then I went up to the president of North America for Diageo and I said, I want to work for them. And he goes, oh, that's so sweet, Latanya, but I'm not letting you go anywhere. That, that's cute. And I said, okay. I persisted for the next year by calling every one of those presidents, including my North America president, and said, I want to work in one of these developing markets. I want to make it happen. I applied for jobs, I had interviews, and the head of legal for all developing markets said to me, Latanya, we'll be honest with you. We, we admire your ambition, you know, but we honestly don't think you have the appetite to work in developing markets. And I looked at them and I said, you know what? You'll never know until you give me a chance. A couple months passed. I didn't get the jobs I applied for. It was one in Kenya, one in South Africa, one in Asia. Never got it. And I'll never forget, I had my head down one night. And my British boss comes up to me and says, you know, I don't know what you said to the head of legal for, for Asia, or for developing markets, but he created a role for you. And there's only one thing you have to agree to do. And I said, oh, what, you know, what is it? He goes, you need to be there in eight days. And I'm like, where? <laughs> He's like, Ghana. You're gonna be the new general counsel of Guinness Africa, and we're gonna put you in Ghana because that's the safest place from our perspective to work in Africa. And you need to be there in eight days. Oh, and it's only for eight weeks. We're just gonna test you, okay? Two years later, I was still in Ghana as the general counsel for Guinness. And the appetite that they were so concerned about, you know, and, and, and whether or not I, had, I could work in these particular markets ended up becoming a permanent role. And for me, I rewrote the story. I decided at that moment that I was going to marry my passion and my purpose. And for me, that is an example of how you dare to be bold. Additionally, as a leader, you must dare to be fearless. Dare to be vulnerable. Fearless leaders cannot be afraid to fail. But in addition to that, you cannot be afraid of being your authentic self. And it all comes to together. And let me explain what I mean. From little child, I always had a lot of friends around me. I was always popular. I played sports. I was theater and drama and all that stuff. I had a lot of people around me. But I never fit in. I, I was never invited to the parties. I was never invited to people's homes. But I was always surrounded by people. In fact, I had certain gifts when I was little. And if you have this gift, you know what I mean. But I have what is called the power of discernment. I also had very, very strong intuition. Again, if you have it, you know what, what that means. My friends used to call me a witch because they didn't understand why every time I said to them, don't go in that room. I just, just don't do it. And I couldn't explain why. And when they would go in the room, something would happen to them, right? In fact, I remember telling my friends one time, don't go to the mall. You, you shouldn't go today. You know, I'm not going. They're like, we're here to pick you up. What do you mean you're not going? I can't go. I, I, I'm not going. And that day, my friends almost got killed by a tractor trailer truck on the highway. And I remember them coming back and saying to me, we are not your friend anymore because you are a witch. <laughs> and I didn't know what this gift was. I didn't know, you know what intuition was at 10, 11, 12 years old. I just didn't know. I was always different. And I remember when I took my first law firm job, 
And I remember that I was never invited to lunch. The partners would walk by my office, hey, LT, and then go to the next office and ask, you know, the young white male out to lunch, and I'd hear him, you know. Um, I was never included. And I just didn't understand why. And I remember going to one of the senior associates and saying, why don't you guys ever ask me out? You know, why, you know, is there, what's wrong? And she literally looked at me and said, oh, LaTanya, we <laughs> just don't get you. And I'll never forget, it broke me. Completely broke me. And I would hear that in my ear for years. We just don't get you. But what I learned, two things happened for me in my career. I remember when I started this job at Diageo, I would sit down with my stakeholders, we talk and we have heart to hearts, and I remember one of my stakeholders saying to me, Latanya, if you ever say to me again that you are a black female lawyer, I'm, ne I'm just never gonna support you. You need to walk in the room and say you are a damn good lawyer, and that's it. I want to hear about your race. I want to hear about you know you being a woman. Just be a damn good lawyer. And that's it. I thought, wow. Okay. And then I remember my general counsel said to me one time. I said, but I just I don't feel like I fit in. You know, I try so hard. She said, Latanya, own it. So what? Just own it. You don't fit in. Own it. And that's when I realized. <laughs> Sometimes, as a leader, you have to be willing to shave off the layers and be your authentic self. Remove the layers. Do not be afraid to remove the layers. Be you. Because guess what? Under all those layers is a freshness smoothness, right? <laughs> <laughs> but under all those layers, you're going to find a smoothness and a freshness and a genuineness that only you can bring to the room, right? Because we're all specially made. We all have our own gifts and talents. And until you're willing to remove those layers when you walk in the room, you're not being a fearless leader. Let your team see who you are because that's your biggest advantage. And then lastly, is selfish, being a selfless leader. What does that mean? Humility is a quiet confidence in your skills. And the ability to be hum hum have humbleness and to put ego aside is a strong trait of a leader. In my role in particular, I can't have ego. I work in countries where women are not allowed to speak, more or less, be a leader. When I go into my meetings in the Middle East, I can't talk. I can just be in the room, right? I have to trust my team to be the ones to talk. Now, they might say everything I tell them to say, right? But I need to be able to put my ego aside and say, you know what? We need to win. That's the goal, right? It's not about me. It's about Vic. It's about winning, right? And so you need to be willing to put your ego aside, especially as a woman in a developing market. So in closing, <laughs> in closing, I used this analogy yesterday, but in a different way. I'm surprised it's something else. Like it's different. I was on another panel yesterday. <laughs> you want to know what this is? Big lighters, right? Does anybody know how these work? <laughs> Unlike other lighters, we have a metal ball, a flint, that you have to get a mask at. <laughs> <laughs> but the only way you can light this thing is if you're willing to create conflict, right? If you are willing to create friction, that's how you get the light.
you must be willing to embrace challenges, successes, failures, because the only way you're gonna be the light in the room is when you're willing to apply pressure and generate a spark. So I dare you to be bold, fearless, and selfless.